Welcome to Meaningful Mornings. And greetings from Albany. This weekend, this month, this year, we are celebrating Juneteenth. By show of hands, how many of you are familiar with Juneteenth? On June 19th, 19, 1865, there was 250,000 enslaved African-Americans in Texas, just in Texas. And though they were to be free because of the law, this was not implemented until June 19th, 1865. Now fast forward a century and a half. It still feels like the law is sharing one thing and the implementation is different. Juneteenth is also described as Freedom Day. And so much of what we do in society is namesake, just words. for there to be a fundamental, factual freedom day. This can only be possible when there's the sense of oneness. The way we feel a oneness with ourselves to feel the same, not just with our family. For so many, that's the purpose of their life. People like that cause this hierarchy, this uh, power struggle. Not just with community, not just with society. See the difference back in the day between Texas and New York as an example. But humanity. And that is what we do in this workshop is that our, our focus is not family or even community. I'm sharing that to the community that the focus is not community, nor society. This is not an American workshop. We are investing in humanity so that there is a fundamental, fundamental, factual freedom day. This weekend, this month, this year, as you celebrate Juneteenth, Think big, live in an expansive way. We just saw me Tejo Mayananda shared with all of us. That means you too, that there are four factors that will contribute towards one's enlightenment. Those factors are Punya, Prayatna, Acharya, Kripa. Punya is the selfless way that you have lived, which has made your mind quieter. That was strongly referenced in verse 28. Then, Prayatna. Quieter your mind, the more you want quietude in your personality. Working hard is not enough. So next comes Acharya, who guides these efforts to work smart. And when you work hard and you work smart, all is awesome. All feels grace filled. That is Kripa. So did grace come from above or did grace come from within? Chapter seven is about internalizing, yes? Invoking. Why I'm repeating this is each of these factors has a compound effect. 
you start with living in an expansive way, the momentum will grow towards effort. The momentum will grow more when an acharya comes into one's life. Momentum will grow the most in terms of grace. Sri Krishna right now is completing this chapter with hope. There's been so many verses about Anya Devata, people who live for the sense organs, people who live for popular people, etc. And he's sharing how not to be such a person. If you are, how to grow out of it. If you're not, how to not fall into that. He shares more in verse 29. This is the second last verse of the chapter. Jara marana mokshaya mama yatantite Te Brahma Tad Vidu Kritsnam Adhyatmam Karma Chakilam Jara. Can you show me Jara? This is Jara. Can you all see all the Jara in there? <laughs> jara is getting old. Then Marana, the completion of getting old is dying. Life is a terminal condition, correct? Nobody can stop nobody from dying. Mokshaya. To want to be free from getting old. To want to be free from dying. Is it possible while you feel you are the body? It's not possible. And so the implication of this quarter is that you start by feeling that you are more than the body. And for all of us who have invested almost 100 weeks in our EQ, in our SQ, I pray that you feel that you're more than the body. The fulfillment of this, though, the end of this, is to feel you are not the body. The way you feel you are not your toothbrush, you are not your socks, you are not your hair to an extent, to feel the same way about this entire entity. How? Seems so impractical for those who didn't drink coffee this morning. All you're thinking about is coffee, coffee, coffee. <laughs> ways to practice being more than the body is to care less about your appearance be healthy there's no need to be beautiful if you are fine if you're not equally fine is that beauty for you even if it's for you it's in reference to others correct if nobody ever saw you would you care to be beautiful See how subtly we live by the body. To care less about your appearance, to care less about the cravings of the body. Is it important to eat every time you're hungry? <laughs> if you're hungry, you're hungry, let it be. Is it important to always have enough salt and pepper in your food? Is it important to always have hot food or cold food? Care less about the cravings of the body. That's why it's called a craving. It's so unreasonable. It's irrational. Less appearance, less craving. That's how to be more than the body. But to not be the body, that requires, I'm sharing this in a mandatory way, contemplation. If one cannot contemplate, one will always feel they're more than the body, but they're also the body. In this verse, and really in the end of chapter seven, the seed and seeds for chapter eight are being planted. 
Chapter 8 is a lovely chapter on how the direction that you invest your day in becomes the result for tomorrow. The way you live in this lifetime, how your next lifetime will be, is very strongly connected. That's why some, when someone dies, chapter 8 is chanted. It is more of a ritualistic sentiment, though. I've already told all of you, chant chapter 2, verses 11 to 30. Mam ashritya yatantiye. To want to be free from getting old and dying, then one's support should be me. Ashritya, support. Mom, Shri Krishna. Why? What can you do for us, Shri Krishna? Creation is subject to getting old and dying, not the creator. So if I identify with the creator, then all of a sudden, I do not identify with getting old and dying. And for some of us that may not be so clear, then expand this to consciousness. Most definitely, consciousness doesn't get old. Our memories may get old. <laughs> Do you all know what verse we're on? What, what, what chapter we're in? <laughs> Our memories get old, but the consciousness is unaffected by this. So Shri Krishna is sharing. If I become you, then aging and dying become not applicable. Don't you love it on questionnaires when there's a not applicable? <laughs> like when I donate my blood, then there's many questions on being pregnant. And I like, I don't have to deal with those questions in this micro example. Not applicable. <laughs> Immigration questions, right? I'm a born Canadian, so not applicable about this, this, and this. One more insight about this. <clears throat> For all of you who are in our Vedanta and Bhagavata course, the final way to deal with vasanas, it's called nasha, destruction. How does it happen? Disidentification. You cannot destroy your vasanas the way you do through exhaustion and substitution. Cannot. <laughs> Imagine I have a vasana for smoking. Okay, I'm just going to keep on smoking and it's going to go, go away. <laughs> I have to disidentify from that. Then, Te Brahma. Who's Te? What does Te mean? Te means them or for us, you. Who are you? Brahma. By thinking big, living in an expansive way, you rediscover you are infinite. Tad viduhu, kritsnam, and one knows this fully. Here, knowing is equivalent to being. That's why the word kritsnam is used, which means fully, completely. Sri Krishna is sharing that one knows this completely. One has rediscovered this once and for all. This third quarter is tatvamasi. This third quarter is a mahavakya, that you are divine. In addition to this, not that there's any addition. Adhyatmam karma cha akilam. One knows akilam, all. One knows adhyatman, they know themselves. Karma, what they're doing. So one gets to know who they are. One gets to know what they're doing. Isn't that Prince Arjuna's predicament right now? He's forgotten who he is. So he's forgotten what to do. When does Bhagavad Gita end? 
chapter 2, verse 30. You don't get it then? Now it's ended again, chapter 7, verse 29. <laughs> but if we don't get it, we just keep on studying. But here is the, the teaching, the realization. This is Vijnana. Not an intellectualization, rather an internalization. From inspiration to application. What are we doing this week? I've talked about Juneteenth, correct? Living expansively, yes. Selfless week. How many of you are practicing this by a show of hands? Very good. I've been reading everyone's contributions online for which I am appreciative. Selfless week means the weekend too, just <laughs> because you don't join for <laughs> the Freedom Monster Talks. It's still selflessness week. Shanti. Shanti, shanti, be safe, be sound, be serene, be joyful.